East Point Academy is an 11 to 16 academy based in the town of Lowestoft. Very much the ethos is about being a real community school. The principles of aspiration, uh, independence, respect and resilience, they underpin everything we do. children learn, the best start in year seven definitely makes a difference throughout the whole of the high school career. Thank you year seven for coming to have a quick chat with me about your transition experience. What were you concerned about coming to EPA? I was a bit worried about the teachers because I didn't know any of them except you and it was just that fright that uh, really got to me. And how have you found the teachers since you've been here? They've been great. Yeah, you've been happy, that's good, yeah. that's good. There's a lot of expectations on children after SATs exams and things like that that they have to do in year six. So what we really seek to do is give them an opportunity to spend the summer break content and without any concerns about coming in September. We give them a week in July where they can come and get to know their teachers, make new friends, we always make sure that every child has at least one friend and one friendly face at least in their tutor group so that they've always got every day a bit of contact with someone from primary school. And we set them, which means they might have a variety of children in their set, but they're always going to know someone. When I was first here, I was actually pretty scared of making new friends because I didn't think anyone have to, would have the same interests as me. But when I first started my classes, I found that Lily was had the same interests as me and we became friends instantly. <laughs> So we're here today talking about the school um, and what we think of it. I find they do work really well with the mental well-being of students as well. I definitely think that. I don't really have a lot of struggles with anything like that, but when I have in the past, the SSO is so, so good here. I feel like the school puts a conscious effort into like checking up on their students and making sure how they're coping with the pandemic is pretty Cool. During lockdown, our school was constantly sending out work every day. We had our sessions coming in once it was all right for the students to come into the school. And then even before September started, we had those two weeks where we came in. So we've always had that support from the teachers about what we're doing. Um, what are your aspirations past GCSEs and after you leave high school? Hopefully after my GCSEs, I want to go to sixth form and study law and psychology. When I picked my GCSE options, they sat me down and spoke with me about them and like spoke about what the GCSE course would entail and what the exams would be themselves. The main function of the school is to give the students the best opportunities for their next steps and we do this through just hard work. One across, three up. It starts with our curriculum, our timetable. We have an extended day, we do an extra half an hour every day in comparison to traditional schools, which adds up to an extra two and a half hours a week. Um, so we start by working that little bit longer. That allows us to have a broad curriculum, but also to be able to study those subjects in the depth that they require. When I'm teaching history, I mean, I want to make sure the students are enjoying it. I want to make sure that they come to the lessons enthusiastic and that they want to, to, to learn more about the history of this area, of, of the country and of the world. And I want them to, to improve their knowledge. You know, this isn't just about learning things you know, like a list of facts or things in the past. They need to kind of be a little bit enthused about it and, and see the, the experiences of people and how they kind of relate to their lives. And you know, they're growing up into a complicated and interesting world. I want them to know as much about it as possible. Key phrase that is constantly being used and which is regularly missed out by a lot of our year 11s is this would be useful. The question is how useful is this source? But give it a try, give it a practice, and I'll mark these out of eight and let you know what you got 
next week when I see you. So as well as the actual lessons, we try and offer quite a lot more for students as well. So we have a history and politics group so we can discuss some of the issues in the world and things that we might not have time to cover in class. But every year we also have a, a trip abroad. We, take, we go to Italy or we go to Germany, we go to the Netherlands and Belgium. We try and see some amazing historical sites. So there's always these opportunities for students to widen their, their knowledge and their experiences of the world not just in the classroom. You know, everything that's happened over the last six months has meant we want to try and catch students up. We don't want any student to feel like they're unprepared. So we go above and beyond revision sessions, the odd day here, making sure that students are given every, every chance to catch up and every chance to be fully prepared for when, when the exams roll around. So our traditional curriculum, which involves those core subjects of English, math, science, history, geography and languages. We have a real breadth of that and give that plenty of time in the curriculum. But we add to that those creative subjects like art, um, performing arts, technology, where they get a chance to express their ideas and develop them and evolve them still further. Or they need creativity in those traditional academic subjects just as much as they need in art and design. and keep it on the side of your bowl and use your other hand to work the pastry together so the heat of your hand is going to help get it into a ball, okay? Over a period of time now we've identified as doing very well with results. Students are performing fantastically well over the last five years, which is a marked change from where we have been historically. But along with that has brought us additional funding to improve the school site. And uh, we're in a transitional stage at the moment where half the school is being either knocked down or refurbished and a new building is being put in place. So we've got new science and maths classrooms coming. It's been a real development. This has come from the Department for Education noticing the um, improvement in the school and, and seeing that we need to really improve the school still further by giving us better resources. It is a really exciting time and by September 2021 this should be complete. One of the best measures of the success of the school in recent years is the Progress 8 figure which comes out every year and is as a result of the GCC results for the year group who have just completed their exams and that measures their progress that they've made from when they started with us till the end and it measures against like for like students across the country and we have been well above the national average for the last five years and have been in the top three or four in Suffolk for the last five years as well. On average, our students make roughly half grades more progress than other students nationally. Have a good evening, guys. Bye-bye. Having been a pupil here at this school many years ago, um, and then teaching a number of the parents of the children who are now coming up to our uh, to EPA. I've, I have a real privilege because I'm able to see the school from a number of perspectives. This book is the admissions register and it actually stems from 1940 to 1955 uh, which we found when we were clearing out the archive for the new build and it was really lovely. I've actually been able to find my uncle who came to school here in 1950 but it does remind me that I have a connection to this area and um, as a, mem a number of members of staff do um, which is why we're, we always feel we're working really hard to work with the community because we're all very much anchored in it. <laughs>